What is going on YouTube? I'm Lamont at Large. Today I am in Ashland, Kentucky to talk about three murders most foul. Ashland sits right on the Kentucky-Ohio border and it's about 15 minutes away from the border with West Virginia. So go back to a time in the late 1800s in Ashland, Kentucky. Had about 3,000 people. Uh, this town was known for uh, pretty much mining coal and pig iron. You had a lot of people starting to come over to this neck of the woods because it was, back in those days, a somewhat of a booming coal town. But a very tragic crime and event occurred two days before Christmas, December 23rd, 1881, in this very neighborhood right here. You had three children... Robert Gibbons was 17, Fanny Gibbons 15, and their neighbor and friend, Emma Carrico, she was 17. Now, Emma Carrico, that was her birth name, but her mother married a man by the last name of Thomas, so she's often referred to as Emma Thomas. So on that night, Robert and Fanny's parents, they had left town so they're up late at night. Neighbors said they heard them playing, you know, laughing, you know, doing what, you know, teenagers might have done back in those days. And all of a sudden, maybe about one o'clock in the morning, Emma's mother, who lived right next door, noticed that their house was on fire. So she runs screaming to wake the neighbors up to get these people to help like, put out the fire and rescue the kids that are trapped inside. So a couple of the guys, they go in there to, you know, rescue anybody that's in the house and they noticed a very, very horrific scene. Uh, they seen both Robert, Fanny and Emma, all three were bludgeoned to death blood everywhere by the time the rescuers ran into the house to try to save robert fanny and emma it was already too late their badly burned bodies were laid out on a mattress on the front lawn and mind you it's still dark and people in the neighborhood are thinking okay they're dead they died in the fire they died of probably smoke inhalation and it wasn't until the sun came up that day that the true gore of the situation was thrust in front of their very eyes. When the sun was up, then you went into the house and you could see that there was blood everywhere. You could see that the, their bodies were horribly mutilated. Once the police came and got their bodies and they took them to examine them. Now, of course, back in those days, doing an autopsy, uh, was not the way it is now, but somehow they were able to ascertain that both Emma and Fanny were sexually assaulted uh, in that crime. Once the examination was completed and word quickly spread that these girls were sexually assaulted and all three were murdered, the town of about 3,000 started on this hunt for the killer. Now, many, many men that were working in the foundries and the uh, mills here in Ashland were pulled in, just interviewed at their jobs. Where were you? What were you doing? And that was a very painstaking process of, you know, talking to literally at least 1,500, 2,000 men. But detectives uh, quickly focused on one George Ellis, because during the interview with him, because they were just doing really quick, like one, two, three minute interviews, uh, he was acting a little shifty, a little nervous, and they pulled him into the headquarters, whatever you want to, want to call it that day, and they said, okay, like, what's going on? And he quickly confessed that him and two of his associates, uh, William Neal and Ellis Kraft, were responsible for the murder. Okay, so they're talking to the police. Or, or tell us what happened. Like, why did you do this? What happened? And he said that Ellis and William 
had talked about, you know, the girls that lived over on the corner over here and their plan was to rape them and kill them in so many words. So they said, well, how'd you, how'd you get into the house if it was locked up? And he said, well, we, we, there was like a window, it was unlocked and we opened it and then we got a boost and we just got up in the house. And as soon as we got in there, Robert confronted us. Now, Robert uh, only had one leg. Uh, he suffered a very bad accident uh, when a rail car accidentally ran over him. So you can imagine him having the crutches, getting up, being I mean, practically def defenseless. And that's when he said that Kraft uh, picked up his uh, axe and clubbed him over the head with it and killed him. And then when... The other two girls, they heard the, you know, the screaming and the commotion. They came up, and as soon as they got up, that's when all three men uh, sexually assaulted uh, both the girls. After William raped Emma, he killed her with an axe, and then Ellis Kraft quickly did the same to Fanny Gibbons. He had a crowbar on her and repeatedly bashed her in the head, killing her as well. After they were, after they were done committing their atrocious crimes, they set fire to the house. They poured uh, oil everywhere, all over their bodies to try to cover up their crimes. On January 16, 1882, Neil and Kraft go on trial for the murders of Robert, Fanny, and Emma. Of course, Neil is denying that he was there. He was saying that he was working at the mill up until midnight. He couldn't have possibly had traveled from the mill uh, to the house where the murders took place and committed that crime. However, the prosecution had a bit of evidence against uh, all three individuals. Number one, of course, you have George's testimony that he committed the crime along with uh, Neil and Ellis. Number two, they do have the murder weapon. And number three, and this was, I guess you could call the smoking gun. They have Neil's coat, which was covered in blood. And you would ask Neil's co-workers, yeah, that's his coat. Well, what's, what's it? Why is it covered in blood? Well, because he committed the crime. So you had about a 10 day trial and the jury, they took about 18 minutes and uh, they rendered a verdict of guilty and they were sentenced both to hang and uh ellis was hung may 30th 1882 and Kraft was hung a little bit later i don't know why october the 2nd 1883 um not sure why they didn't uh, execute him just the same day as the other guy so whatever happened to George Ellis he was the one who said that you know him Neil and and Kraft committed the crime and he claimed during his own trial that he was forced to do it and he was threatened that hey if you don't help us commit this crime we're gonna kill you well, for him, spilling the beans, he actually was spared the death penalty and received a uh, verdict of life in prison. However, the good-natured folks of Ashley, Kentucky, said, "No, no, 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 no. We're not. We're not doing. We're not playing this game." And they went, broke into the jail in Catlettsburg, where he was being held dragged him out of jail brought him back here to ashland and uh, hung him and they just left his body there now i don't know if there was too many people coming to the jail to break him out or you know maybe the guards didn't really care but uh listen when you get a angry mob of 30 people you got men with guns and all that hey you're only like one or two guys in the whole jail. What are you going to do? They might kill you as well. You just say, hey, have at it. Go ahead and uh, handle your business, I guess. Uh, so justice uh, was ultimately served 
uh, to all three scumbags. Just, uh, you know, a, a very, very odd crime. And I always am fascinated by how, you know, these heinous crimes take place so long ago because you think that we live in a, in a world now where it, some parts of it could be seen as evil and there's a lot more people here alive now than there was back in the uh, olden days but um, you know man's heart has been you know I'll say this most people I feel are good hearted of course but just like how yin and yang works you have a world where uh, it's, it's primarily good but there's 7 billion people on the planet and of course you're going to have uh, evil monsters uh, such as uh, those three individuals committing these heinous crimes uh, just with bloodlust in their eyes and their hearts and you know don't understand it but anyways um, if you see this corner house right here um, this is the exact corner where the crime was committed. Now, I don't believe houses had addresses back in those days, but it definitely happened on a corner. And so I believe it could have been right here. It could have been right here or it could have been right here but it was on this corner one of these houses right here and i'm gonna guess it was actually this house that's my guess as 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 best as i can assume but like i said the exact location is unknown but it definitely happened uh, on, on this very intersection right here. So anyways, uh, we're going to make a trip to the Ashland Cemetery to visit the final resting place of the uh, three teenagers who were, who were brutally murdered on that late night, early morning, Christmas Eve, 1881. Exactly nine-tenths of a mile from where the murder occurred are the final resting places of Emma, Robert, and Fanny. And this is Emma's grave right here. Gone but not forgotten. Five days before her birthday, wow. And but not very far. You can imagine back in those days, the cemetery was quite a bit smaller. Or the uh, brother and sister, Robert and Fanny. Rest in peace to all three. A uh, very brutal crime. However, justice was ultimately done upon the perverts. Okay, guys. Lamont at large. I got to hit the road. I will see you on the next episode. God bless. Peace out.